If you felt like the last year or so has been tough as a real estate agent, I promise you, so has everyone else. Now, there's some things that I'm gonna tell you today that should make the next year much easier for you and put some things in, into perspective that I guarantee will help you to sell more houses. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode 352 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am your host, Dustin Brome, here in Salt Lake City, Utah, where today, September 17th, it has snowed in the mountains for the first time this year. Absolutely crazy. It usually doesn't snow that early in the year, but here we are. Uh, so it's a little fun fact for you. Welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast. I'm going to put some shit into perspective for you today. Because there's a lot of agents that are struggling right now because you're putting way too much pressure on yourselves in an unfair way, right? It's now hear me out. It's absolutely important and crucial that you do put pressure on yourself, that you push yourself outside of your comfort zone, because that's how you grow, of course. And I'm not saying you need to take it easy or not work as hard. That's not what I'm saying. So hear me hear me today because a lot of you are working hard you are committed but you're just you don't think it's enough your your perspectives all jacked up you your expectations of yourself and the results that you should have are all out of whack and and I'm also seeing a lot of agents that are just you're you're you think you have to do so much more especially with social media with marketing you feel like you have to do so much more it has to be so technical. It has to be this super professional polished shit. You've got to have this thousand dollar camera and blah, blah. And, and then that causes you to do nothing, right? You, you, you have this paralysis where you're like, well, it has to be perfect or I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to help you out today, right? Today is about forgiving yourself. It's about having some perspective that you're actually much further ahead than you think you are. Spoiler alert. And I'm going to put some stuff into perspective that I, it will help you sell more houses. So let's jump into that. Before we get started, we have like what, just over two weeks, I think less than three weeks until the Ignite Team Builder Summit here in Salt Lake City. If you want to build any kind of real estate business, no matter how it's structured, no matter what that looks like, if it's a sales team or a hybrid or a revenue share or a referral network or some other version, it doesn't matter. If you are an agent who wants to build a real estate business, this is the room. This is the mastermind that that. I've put together in Salt Lake City, Utah, October 9th and 10th for you that's going to give you everything you need and meet the people who have already built the thing that you want to build. But you've got to get in the room. What's crazy about events like this is most people think that what you learn from the speakers on stage is, is where all the value is. And there is value there, of course. Like you're going to learn a lot of incredible things from some of the biggest team builders in the industry, Neil Dingra, uh, Michael Perry, Paige Steckling. Jonathan Campbell runs the number five ranked team in America. It's just insane. Like the, the, the amount of knowledge and the systems that they're going to share and uh, they're going to open their playbook and give you all their secrets, right? So that's super valuable. But what you're not factoring in here is just by taking that leap and getting yourself a plane ticket and getting yourself a hotel room and taking the, the two hours out of your out of your life, or sorry, the, the two days out of your life and away from your family to come, it could be the unlock that you're looking for, the, like the, the, most, the most powerful thing that could ever happen to you that unlocks all of your potential could happen while you're, at a, you're getting coffee or at, you're at a lunch break and you sit down with somebody who's a few steps ahead of you and they just, they fix something that you've been stuck on for years. Or they put something into perspective, you're like, holy shit, I didn't realize I could do it that way. And boom, you're unlocked and you gain belief. Like it's the people that you talk to, it's it's the experience, it's the energy, it's the investment that you make to be here. That's what that's what's gonna make ignite, ignite your business. So there's still a few tickets available, and we're running out of time. I encourage you right now, go to igniteslc.com and get yourself some tickets. And um, this, this, is, this is the biggest event I've ever done. I told, I told my team earlier today that I'm actually scared shitless. I've pushed myself so far out of my comfort zone with this. Uh, I know it's going to be wildly impactful for everyone there. 
but it's it's so far out of my comfort zone to do a an event of this scale, which I've just never done before, which I know that I'm on the right track, right? Because I'm I'm way out of my comfort zone, scared shitless. I put myself in a position where I better perform or there's going to be people who are uh, not stoked. And when that whenever I feel that way, I'm I know that I'm about to hit a grand slam. Don't miss this. Ignite SLC.com. Get your tickets while they still exist. This is the biggest event I've ever done. I don't know if I'm going to do it again next year. We'll see what happens. But this is this is truly a unique event. And this could be the unlock that you're looking for. But you've got to get out of your own way and get a ticket and show up. IgniteSLC.com. The other tools that you need in your tool belt. Uh, with, you know, the Fed is supposed to cut rates this week. About time, right? Will it be... 25? Will it be 50? Will it be 75 basis points? I don't know. But mortgage rates should eventually get some relief as a result of this, um, potentially, if it's a big rate cut. But what's crazy is we're real estate agents. You're not supposed to be an economics major. You're not supposed to be some you know Wall Street housing expert. You're a real estate agent. Your job is to sell houses. So you need those experts in your back pocket. Better yet, what if you could just click on an app or log into a website or open an email and everything that you need to know to give you all the perspective about what's happening in the market, what will happen, what it means to your buyers, what it means to your sellers. It's all right there. And within like two minutes, like seriously, within like two minutes, you are absolutely up to date and you have all these world-class econo you know, economists and housing experts who crunch numbers all day long and analyze and they just tell you within two minutes what you need to know. Do you think you'd be a better agent? Do you think you'd be able to better advise your buyers and sellers? Do you think you'd be more confident going into conversations with buyers and sellers about the state of the market, about interest rates, about pricing? Of course you would. So the tool you need in your tool belt is Keeping Current Matters. And you can try it out by going to trykcm.com slash BAM. Give them a shot and see why they are in, they're in the tool belt of all the top producers in America. They, they need to be in yours. Try kcm.com slash BAM. And BAM X, they give you so much content that you can just copy and paste and customize yourself. It's done for you. The BAM X community is incredible. Go over to nowbam.com and use code MASSIVE at checkout. Save yourself some money off the membership to BAM X. It's truly one of the best values in real estate that I've seen. So nowbam.com, check out BAM X and use code MASSIVE at checkout and save yourself some money. Let's um, let's jump into it. So I'm going to look at my notes here because this is important. There's a few there's a few main pillars that I want to hit today. So first off, um, we all feel like we we could and should do more on social media. I feel that way. You do, and I don't think that that ever goes away. Okay, so if you feel this pressure, like oh, I'm slacking, I'm not doing enough, or my content sucks, or I'm you know, we all feel that way. Even, even the people that you look up to and you're like, oh my gosh, they're just crushing it. They're so far ahead. How do they do all that? They're, their listing videos are just so amazing. They feel like they're slacking. They feel like they could do more. So I think that's just, that's just how it is for ambitious, hungry entrepreneurs. That doesn't go away. But when you feel that way, it doesn't mean that you really are slacking. It doesn't mean that you are you know, um, half-assing things. It's just, you want to do more. You want to do better because you're ambitious. So it's important that you know the difference. Now, if you are slacking, you know it. Like if you really are, if you're like, oh, I only post like once every other week and you know, blah, blah, blah. like, yeah, you, you need to do more, but then you got to prioritize it. And uh, I was talking to one of our, one of our agents today on our, um, team mastermind that, um, you know, she, she's busy, right? She, She's a mom, she has a family and, you know, she has all these things and, and she struggles to do certain activities that bring a ton of leads for her. And, you know, she just, she felt this pressure to do so much more in terms of content creation. And what's interesting is we found out that when she is engaged and comments and participates in certain Facebook groups or, you know, Instagram comments by being social on social, she gets a ton of business. And so... I don't know if you need to hear this, but when you comment, that is content. And and you're and look, what's the 
when you're commenting and, and you're, you're in Facebook groups, you're in on Facebook pages and you're, you're cultivating conversations, you're speaking with people, like you're literally having conversations on social. What's the whole point of creating content? It's not to increase your view count. It's not to get a certain number of likes so that you feel good about yourself. It's to generate new conversations. So if you can just skip that or not skip it, but in addition to your content creation, you're getting a bunch of business by commenting and being social and being helpful in Facebook groups, then you should probably do that. I'd say that's prospecting. I'd say that's pretty damn valuable. That's a money-making activity. So just because we all say you should be posting once a day and you got to be active, like, yes, but sometimes if you have to say, screw it, I'm, I can't post today, I can't post tomorrow, but I'm gonna do these few things. I'm gonna be active in this Facebook group. I'm going to comment on other people's stuff. I'm gonna be active in, in my messages to keep the conversations going. That can be so much more fruitful. So if you're overthinking social media, just understand it. Commenting is content. When, you're, when, when you have conversations going and you're cultivating them and you're building relationships, that's literally the goal of doing the content in the first place. It's just a different version of getting, you know, using social media to build your business. So don't forget that. It, a lot of us are just overthinking it and we're putting way too much pressure on ourselves to create when there's so much other content that you could just participate in. You could comment on and be social on, right? So if you needed to hear that, I hope that helps because uh, we just, we overdo it and we overthink it. Also with content, some of the best stuff that I do is just off the top of my head. I just talk to the camera, uh, standing on my front porch or in my backyard or in the car and I post it and, and it does well. If, if it's something that I'm passionate about and I'm energetic and I'm, I'm concise and I'm to the point or I have a hot take on something, I, I have an opinion and I'm, I put that opinion out there that does uh, so much better than like this super, you know, edited stuff with these fancy captions and zoom ins and zoom outs and graphics over the top and B roll footage. You know, honestly, my worst performing content that I do is it, taking a clip from my podcast, putting B-roll footage in it with captions, like the high edited stuff that used to really crush it a, a year or two ago is my worst performing stuff. My best performing content takes the least amount of time. Most content creators that I know, most of the, the, the high level content creators that we all look up to, the stuff they spend the least amount of time doing is what they get the most results from. Green screen videos, just off the top of your head, you know, hot takes on things or talking head, just quick, hey, here's this, or here's behind the scenes of this. Isn't that amazing that by spending less time, you could get better results? So if that's the case, like if, if that's how it works now, not all the time, you got obviously you have to be smart about what it is that you're doing, of course, but green screen videos, absolutely crush it. I need to do a hell of a lot more of those green screen videos because every time I do, I get a ton of views and a ton of engagement and uh, I get new followers. I get new profile visits. I get um, new conversations started. It's unbelievable what happens. So I, I, I'm kind of coaching myself here. I need to do a hell of a lot more green screen videos because that's what's best. And the best part is it's so much less time consuming. It's so much easier to do. I just have to have an opinion or something interesting or helpful to say on a certain topic and then put it out. If you're overdoing your social media, if you're over editing, like some of you guys think that you need this big editor and, and all this stuff, or you're spending three hours editing and doing captions and transitions. What if you just did a green screen and it took you five minutes instead of two and a half hours? If it takes you less time, gets you better results, do it. If you're overthinking or overdoing social, stop it. Now, another huge issue that I see with agents that is causing so much stress is you're doing too much yourself. You have way too much on your plate. You have everything on your plate because you don't have anyone to help you. So when I talk about building a team, I'm not necessarily talking about building a team of uh of buyer's agents and listing specialists and showing agents and inside sales agents. And like, that's a traditional sales team. That's one version. But what about the support staff? What about having an actual team to help you before you get to, if you want, a sales team? And by the way, 
There's so many different ways to structure a real estate business. And that's why when the Massive Agent Society drops here in a couple of weeks, you need to be in the 12-week business accelerator because I'm going to show you all the different ways that you could structure it. And then you can choose based on your strengths and your weaknesses, how you want to structure it. Because if you're like, if you feel like the industry is pushing you towards a sales team and you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want, I also don't want that. I don't have a traditional sales team. I have a referral team and I have a revenue share organization and the two work together in a very specific way. So there's so many different ways to structure it so you can build your business around your life. So stay tuned when the Massive Agent Society drops. There's a lot. I've been spending most of my time lately building out the content within that and the framework for that. I am so damn proud of what the Massive Agent Society is about to do for you. So keep your eyes open for when that drops and when that becomes available. That for most of you, that's exactly what you've been looking for. Um, it's the roadmap. It's the roadmap. It's the cheat code. It's the blueprint for all of it. If you want to be a CEO or a, an agent entrepreneur. Kind of got on a, out on a uh, tangent there, but I'm excited about it, damn it. Um, as I'm talking to agents lately, there's far too many of you that are doing far too much yourself. See, being busy is not the goal. Being productive is. And if you look at what you spent your time doing all day, if, if, if at the end of the day, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm busy, I'm exhausted, I did all these things. And you're like, but what did I actually do? If it was just busy work, I, can, I guarantee you the vast majority of that shit could have been done by someone else. It could have been done by someone else. So if you're doing too much yourself, uh, and by the way, if you don't know if you are or not, if you literally do everything, if you took a month off and your whole business would just crash to the ground and nothing would happen, no homes would sell, uh, no one would get communicated with, no offers would get, would get written, no homes would get shown, nothing would get posted, then you're doing too much. You have to build a team around you. You need an assistant. You need a transaction coordinator. Maybe you need showing agents to help you, uh, you know, service more buyers without having a formal team structure yet. I think so many agents are like, mm, I need leverage. And, and I love this. I love that you have this desire. You're like, I need leverage. So I'm going to start a team and you go out and get buyer's agents, but you don't have it an administrative assistant, you don't have a TC, you don't have showing agents yet, you don't have an editor, you don't have uh, graphic designers or copywriters. And I'm not saying you need every one of those, but those are examples usually of who you want on your team before you even consider a sales team. You can, you can do so much more when the work that has to get done to be productive is being done by your team. So if you feel super stressed out and you're like, I'm not making any progress, it's probably because you're, you're wearing too many hats. You're doing too much. You're doing too many things. The goal is not to do more tasks. If you want, if you want to grow, I, I got to find this quote. I'm going to, hopefully I have it close by here. Oh, yes. To do great things, you must do fewer things. To do great things, you must do fewer things. It's it's impossible if you're bogged down in all the the tasks and the details and all, all the little shit, like email this person and go, you know, make sure that the earnest money uh, is sent over here. And then, well, this person, I got to schedule showings there. And then I got to make sure this post is scheduled. And then I got to do this, that, and the other. Blah, 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 blah. You're not really doing anything. Like you can't do anything big because you're too busy being busy. So food for thought. Most of you are stressed out and burned out or feel like you're not making any progress because you're not making any progress because you're doing too much yourself. To do great things, you need to do fewer things. Now, here, I shouldn't even have to say this, but I, I want to be very freaking clear here. I'm not saying that those things don't have to get done. What I'm saying is they don't have to get done by you. Most of the stuff that you're spending your time doing on a daily basis does not need to be done by you. It has to be done, but it can be done by someone else. Team building, massive agent society, 12 week business accelerator, blueprint, cheat code, step one through step 12. Holy shit. I'm excited for, for what this is going to do for you and starting your business in the way that's in alignment with you. So you can build your business around your life, not your life around your business.
damn, I'm excited. I wish I could launch it today, but I can't, but we're getting closer every day. Last thing I want to touch on today is with everything that's happened over the last, what, six, nine months. When was it even November? I think when, when all the, the lawsuits and the NAR settlement started happening, is it November of, of 23? I don't know. So let's just say that the last nine to 12 months, there's been so many changes, some subtle, some minor, some huge. The, you've all had to learn a new way of doing business this year in some way. The, in some way, you've had to learn a new way to do your job, to, to, to be a great agent. You've had to change things somewhat, even if it's a new form or implementing this or new verbiage or a different way of presenting a concept to your sellers, whatever it is, understand there's still so many agents that are so far behind you. If you're listening to this podcast, you actually give a shit about progress. You give a shit about growth. You give a shit about being better and making yourself better and becoming more. Now, spoiler alert, you are on the right path. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, it wouldn't be valuable. If, if you are putting in the effort, even if you feel like you're sliding backwards, you're getting burned out, you're getting discouraged, that when you're discouraged and you keep going and you take and you keep making steps forward, you keep taking action, you keep implementing, you feel like you're still getting burned out, you're getting discouraged. That's what the right path looks like. That is the path towards having all the big things that you tell yourself that you want. All those big dreams and big goals that you have for yourself that are in your heart. Everything you're going through right now, the hardships, the frustration, the hurdles, the speed bumps, the uncertainty, the uh, maybe the lack of money, right? The, the, the financial lack that happens sometimes to all of us, if we're being honest, that's proof that you're on the right path. And everyone who's everyone that's built anything worth a damn, anyone that's built any business that's worth anything has gone through the same shit. They've gone through the same shit. They've paid their dues. You right now, as frustrating as it, and as hard as and as stressful as it feels, you're paying your dues. You're making progress because you're paying your dues on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And every time you do, you get a little bit better. You get a little bit better. You Maybe you lose out on this listing because you didn't explain this new concept very well, or you didn't sound very confident. And so the seller was like, eh, not going to hire you. Well, that was one rep. Then you go tomorrow or next week and you have another listing presentation and you're that much better. And then you practice and you watch some videos, you read some, you listen to some podcasts and you practice and you practice and you read and you, you talk to the mirror and then you do it again. And then you do it again. What you're going through right now is what it takes to be successful. I don't know how much longer that will, it'll be this way, but if something, I feel like saying this, I don't even know if this is the right place in, in the podcast to say this, but uh, if you look back at where you were at six months ago, for example, like uh, if you look back at a video you recorded six months ago or an email blast, or you know something you were doing in your business six months ago, if you don't cringe a little bit, if you're not like, Ugh, you know, oh my gosh, then you're not growing fast enough. If you don't look back at the content you were doing six months ago and cringe a little bit, you're not growing fast enough. You're not improving fast enough. You're not growing. You're supposed to look back and be like, wait, what was I even doing? That shows you're moving forward and getting better. So as you think back to a listing presentation or a buyer conversation that you had a month or so ago, and you're like, oh, I cannot believe I said that. I cannot believe I, I, I can't believe I phrased it that way. Like, what was I even thinking? Because you've grown since then. Give yourself some damn grace. Go easy on yourself. Go easier on yourself while also holding your feet to the fire. Because if you, if you have certain goals and dreams and aspirations, in your heart, that means they are possible. If they are in your heart, it is possible. I believe that 
1000%. You are, you would not have the goals and the aspirations that it would, they would not be burning inside of you if you were not capable of reaching them, but understand it's hard. By listening to podcasts like this, by going to events like Ignite, October 9th and 10th in Salt Lake, by joining the Massive Agent Society Business Accelerator when it drops in a few weeks, by listening, by going to other masterminds, by reading books, listening to other podcasts, taking courses, hiring coaches, all of that stuff. That's you investing in faster growth. But you still have to go through the shit. Coming to Ignite is going to just, you know, shorten the, it's going to shorten the path, right? It's, it's going to just cut out a lot of the, you're going to learn. There's going to be so, why am I struggling with this? You'll be able to eliminate so many mistakes, but you still have to do all of the work. You're going to eliminate mistakes, which is going to save you time, which means you're going to get to your goals faster, but you still have to do all the work to get there. So th there's, there's no way around that. You still have to put in the work. You still have to become the person who's capable of having and achieving the goals that you have. Keep freaking going. Get around people that are already doing the thing that you want. Get around those people. Get them in your corner. Get, you need mentors. You need partners. You need to be in masterminds. You need to be in coaching groups. You need to be in communities with the people that are a step or two or five ahead of you already. Because when you're around those people, it's much easier for you to do the things that they've already done because they can show you how to avoid the landmines. They can show you, oh, we made those mistakes. Yeah, don't do that. Do it this way instead. And you're like, cool. So you do that instead. You still have to do that instead, but you're missing all the other bullshit. You're skipping all the mistakes that they had. It's, it's the biggest hack in business. It's the biggest hack in life. Get around as often as possible other agents, other entrepreneurs who have already done or are just a step or two ahead of you in the thing that you're trying to do yourself. If you're trying to grow your independent brokerage and recruit agents, then you better be spending time with and have people that you talk to on a regular basis who are great at recruiting agents. If agent attraction to your brokerage is, is, is what you want, you better have business partners that are really good at, at attracting agents and they can hold your hand and show you how to do it and even do it for you in some situations. I spend a majority of my time, you know, not doing it for people, but doing it with our agents because their business is my business. It's a super cool, it's just a wild concept. It's such a powerful concept that when, when you can be in alignment with the people who have already done the thing that you want so that when your business grows, so does theirs, that's the ultimate cheat code. And there's, and I'm not just talking about what you think I'm talking about. There's so many other instances in this real estate business where that applies. So I want you to leave here today. First off, be proud of yourself for how damn hard you've worked for all the shit that you've put up with that you keep going. You haven't given up. You haven't quit. You're still moving forward. I promise you, if you don't occasionally feel like throwing, like burning it all to the ground, you're not working hard enough. You're not pushing hard enough. We all feel that way sometimes. I had a few weeks, uh, a few days, a week or so ago where I was just in a freaking rut, but I just kept going and kept going and kept going. And then something clicked and I, all of a sudden I got jazzed and it just, that's, that's what happens. I am proud of you. If you're still here listening to this podcast, you're still making steps forward. You're still putting in the work. You're still trying to figure out better and faster ways to do what it is you're doing. Even if, you, if, you, if you're like, I have no idea how I can build leverage for myself and, and get rid of this burnout, but I know I want to, you're already one step of the way there because you've set the intention and you're learning what the options are for you. You're learning what can be done and how you can structure things. But if you don't put the intention out there, how the hell are you ever going to learn what's possible? Thank you for listening. I appreciate you very much. If, if you're hearing this, if you're on the fence about coming to Ignite in Salt Lake, you are meant to come. 
if, if it's eating away at you, if you're like, oh, I really, I know I need to go, but this, oh, I, I know I need to be there, but this. that's your comfort zone trying to pull you back in. If you're in that situation, let me know, reach out to me, send me a DM and say, Hey, I really need to get there, but here's what I'm up against. Let me know. I want as many of you, I want, I want the right people in that room. I want the hungriest agents in that room, October 9th and 10th. Hit me up if I can be helpful to help you through that so you can figure out how to make it happen for yourself. And if this episode was helpful to you, if you found, found it valuable, please consider sharing it with your broker, your team, some other friends that you have in the industry, post it in an industry Facebook group, put it in your story, help us to get this message in front of more agents because there's far too many agents struggling right now. There's far too many. And in a lot of, a lot of ways, I believe it's totally not justified because we're being way too damn hard on ourselves. You're kicking ass. You're still here. You're much further ahead than most of your competitors. They're not here listening to this podcast, trying to better themselves. They're not, they're not flying to Salt Lake in October to come to ignite to better themselves and to get the cheat code and the roadmap. They're, they're too busy arguing about how hard the market is in lab code agents. That's what your competitors are doing. Hell, your competitor probably doesn't even know about these NAR changes yet. I'm amazed at how many agents have no idea what's happened over the last nine months. Their head has been so far in the sand. They have no idea. They're like, wait, forms changed. Why? I saw this literally the other day in a local Facebook group where an agent was like, Hey, uh, what, what, what happened with this? Like what happened? And everyone's like, are you freaking kidding me? You're a lot further ahead than you think you're a lot further ahead than you give yourself credit for, but keep going double down. You already have the fire burning, pour some freaking gas on it. I'll see you guys next week.